<laughs> what? I forgot a microphone like an inch from my mouth. <laughs> that was a I'm beer. wearing I'm wearing like over the ear headphones and all of a sudden I hear this, <laughs> this like vomit sound. <laughs> This is going to be such a good race. Same. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm so happy I finally get to commentate a race of this in a marathon. Welcome. It's going to be fun. Yeah. And the, siren, the sirens are still cute. going. Got new top uh, TCG yeah, commentator. Yeah, uh, it's 2 a.m. here, but don't uh, expect the sirens to go away. <laughs> it's the Twitch cops. They found us. <laughs> All right. Got Ness and mid boss. Someone's mic is maybe echoing too. <laughs> That's not me, is it? Uh, maybe it's not me. Oh, maybe it's not anybody now. I think it might be okay. Cool. We got a race going, so you want me to just count down with the timer? Start the stream timer. Yeah, man, Let's someone go. just give me a countdown and let's go. Let's do it. Alright. Alright. Four, four, three, three two, one, go. Alright, this is a Pokemon TCG. And you might be confused a bit why uh, this is a race or why my people might be so excited, but this is actually an extremely fast-paced game, and uh, there's a lot of skill involved in terms of making decisions on the fly, and kind of judging what the best move is in certain situations. Uh, right off the bat, well, okay, let me explain. We started from a post-tutorial save because the tutorial is mandatory. It takes about eight minutes. And um, it's really slow and automated and boring and just totally awful. <laughs> but yeah, uh, at the start there, they actually uh, removed all the energies from their deck. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's is. mess. I think. Is it Can me? Are you guys okay with actually, uh, like, muting and letting Cypher do commentary? Would that be easier? I'd be okay with that. I don't know about them. They might want uh, to say stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, like, can I you guys do, care. like, unmute when you want to talk or something? I don't know. It's like, this game goes too fast. I couldn't do that. <laughs> I'd be fine um, with commentating. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, that's fine. I can just, like, put it on push to talk real quick. Alright. That would be great. Okay, is the echo gone? Okay. Uh, so, what they did at the start there was they removed all the energy from their decks and they talked to a guy in the lab. There's still echoing going on. It's, I think it's Ness. Okay, I will fix. <laughs> okay. Test, okay. test, test. Per push the talk, working? Yeah. Okay. Okay, well basically they got a bunch of energies at the start. I've tried to explain this for too long. Let's move on. Um, so, doing um, RTAs of this game, meaning like, you know, just uh, attempts to get a fast time, is actually really awful and not a fun experience because every one of these battles can be won in one or two turns if the opponent only draws one basic um, Pokemon card in their hand, in their starting hand, 
and they only have that to play, and you can kill it in one or two turns, then the, the duel's over and you win. So, obviously you want that to happen as much as possible, but trying for as many occurrences of that as, po as possible in an RTA setting is uh, pretty awful. So, there's actually a pretty dedicated racing community for this game. Uh, it's a really great race game, there's often a lot of um, funny things that happen, and the leads can swing like a dozen times throughout the race. Uh, like even right now, I'm trying to follow both streams. It's really fast paced. It's hard to <laughs> hard to follow, but I'll try my best to uh, talk you, about stuff. If you yeah. want, uh, I can like take one stream and try to look at that one too. Oh, do you, are you familiar with the uh, yeah. the run? All right, yeah. I'll JRK one is Ness or okay. <clears throat> so they both went to the uh, the grass club at the start. You basically need to get the um, the club medals, not gym club medals, uh, from the eight clubs, and then you can head to the grandmasters at the begin uh, the center of the map. And once you beat the grandmasters, you face your rival Ronald in a final duel, and then after that, the game's complete. So, they go to the Grass Club first because um, basically the best starting deck, the Fire-centric deck, and the Fire and Fighting-centric deck can pretty easily dispatch all of the Grass Club trainers without needing to um, bank on pulls from boosters. Now you get boosters after you beat each duel and boosters are pretty important for um, later on the run because there's one key booster, the Coliseum booster pack, that has pretty much all the good cards that you want that help either speed up getting key cards for finishing fights or getting the actual Pokemon that finish fights quickly. Um, the key Pokemon you want to draw in boosters are Dugtrio, Scyther, um, I think, uh, Dugong, and Electabuzz, the, the good Electabuzz, the crappy Electabuzz with Quick Attack is, you don't want that at all. Um, but there, there are a few other cards, also Professor Oaks, um, pretty much all the good cards you want are in Coliseum, <clears throat> and the other packs have very few useful cards. I think there's like one or two good cards in Evolution. Um, Mystery has double colorless, but you shouldn't ever have trouble getting double colorlesses. And Laboratory has like nothing. So um, yeah, Grass is just the logical choice to go to first. <laughs> After that, I think uh, Ness is already in the Lightning Club. And the Lightning Club is also pretty easy because uh, Diglett pretty much destroys all the people in this club. He doesn't take any damage from electric moves that aren't over 30 power. And as long as you draw Diglett, you'll pretty much sweep each fight. <clears throat> Yeah, and just to give kind of a brief overview, because obviously not everybody that's watching is going to be super familiar with the card game. Mm -hmm. Just kind of go over some of the basic rules. So uh, there's a couple different ways you can win a duel, but the general gist is you sweep a specified number of Pokemon. Um, the health is represented by those spheres. Uh, and then above the spheres, you see uh, different symbols that uh, mean the different types of energy that are equipped on them. And different moves require different amounts of energy. So uh, it's important that you have a lot of energy uh but i guess not too much because you also need to balance your bench because if your bench runs out at any point you instantly lose the the duel right um another aspect of uh running this efficiently is being able to build decks on the fly with variable draws from boosters so you do want a lot of energy in your decks but you also want a good amount of trainer cards to either cycle through um, the deck, or find specific cards in your deck, or hinder your opponent, and um, you do want a few key Pokemon evolutions, so that you're not stuck with, like, basic Pokemon that can't do shit. Like, right now you see uh, 
Ness is using Growl. I think that's Ness. Yep, yeah, with Ness Growlithe is there, yep. on. Yeah. Uh, Growlithe is a really, really crappy basic Pokemon. Um, Arcanine is good at the start because you don't have other options right now. But um, Growlithe takes two energy to start doing any damage, and 20 damage for two energy is bad compared to Charmander and um, Digwit, for instance. <clears throat> but yeah, right at the start here, uh, you'll see them using this fire and fighting centric deck uh, pretty much all the time. But they will switch it up later on when they need to fight clubs where this deck is less efficient or you know, um, the Pokemon will be weak to the Pokemon you'll see in, for instance, the Water Club decks. Yeah, and just a few uh, more interface things that you can look at, like if you're unfamiliar with just the layout of this game. Uh, so we mentioned the HP and the energy, but then uh, the numbers that you see in the bottom right and the top left corners, uh, they signify the number of Pokemon you have on your bench and the number of prizes you have remaining, which is basically the number of KOs that you have before you lose. Uh, so you can get a general sense of how the duel is going by looking at those. If you see the uh, opposing player have zero on their bench, for instance, then you know that there's a chance to instantly win the duel. Yeah, um, you pretty much always want to win by knocking out all the Pokemon that the opponent has on their bench. But uh, occasionally it does come down to prizes. And yes, this game does have a ton of luck, even outside of getting quick kills by the opponent only drawing like one or two Pokemon at the start. Uh, there's coin flips everywhere. Uh, the... Opponents can use defenders like three turns in a row. Stuff like that can constantly just inhibit you from ending the duel when you want to end it. Like right now, um... That Magmar that was alive for a while, that's one problematic Pokemon that... Uh, every time it attacks, you have to flip a coin when you attack on the following turn. And if you flip Tails, you, your attack pretty much just fails. And... Um, that kind of thing is just all over this run. Which is why people don't really RTA it, they just race it, especially with the... Um, post-tutorial save file, because proper RTAs would start from the beginning of the game and do the tutorial, and the tutorial tutorial combined with grinding for, like, really good luck in every fight is just a very unpleasant prospect. Yeah, I mean, if anyone is watching this and is intrigued, I know probably a lot of people are lost trying desperately to follow what's going on. Yep. But if anyone's intrigued, um, there is a community that races this game regularly. Um, if you know how to get on IRC, the irc.speedrunslive.com server has a uh, hash TCG channel. And you can learn how to... Um, run this game. You can learn the various like deck management um, skills, like decision making skills and fights. And once you get pretty good, like it's actually really really fun to race if you're in the mood. A lot of fights typically end up with either, um, you know, the getting good luck with the opponent having a weak 
basic uh, Pokemon is the only Pokemon they draw, and then you just win quickly. Or if it takes longer than that, generally you'll set up to like, for example, the Charmeleon that ended that fight, or an Arcanine or a Dugong. Um, you just but, you kind of yeah. set up for a late game Pokemon that sweeps everything. Right, but um, I think that the real beauty of this run comes into play when it's like a medium between those two where you're like having to make decisions between um like you have to keep track of the energy that's on the opponent's pokemon because you don't have a clear sweeper in play but um you know you have options available and it's just like the whole duel is making these decisions where if you do something slightly wrong you'll lose time just because you didn't anticipate all of the possible options Right, and, and, the, and the longer the duel goes, the more you're invested in it because it's you got to go back and do the whole duel again if you lose. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> and some of that too is just. Uh, recognizing when you're in an unwinnable situation and just getting out of the game as quickly as you can. Um, not Probably not too often, but... Yeah, I mean, that can happen with... Like, I think for this race in particular, they'll probably be for Murray, which is the Psychic Club leader, and he's notorious for very easily being able to just wall you and waste loads of time while you can't do anything. So, no surprise with this race so far, Nes Kamikaze is like a cheater and gets good RNG at like everything he does, so he's a bit ahead right now. <clears throat> And I think all of these menus, it's like, what, maybe a frame that they're on the screen and then you can skip through? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I have exact figures, but this it's is just this basically, it's, this run is just non-stop menuing, which might sound boring on paper, but the fact that it's actually dynamic menuing, where you're constantly making decisions, is really cool. Right, because you have to react every time you draw a card or... You know, something doesn't go your way in the battle. You got to kind of think on the fly because of how fast you can move through the menus. Any yeah. time you spend thinking is time that you're losing. Mm -hmm. So just to comment on um, the fight Ness had, I think he lost the first try at Nikki. Uh, so generally, drawing Diglett first is a good thing, but then you have this fight where Diglett's weak to grass. So it's a really risky thing to. Um, be banking on Diglett as your point man. But oh, I guess he's set up for Charmander right now. And then uh, on mid boss's screen there, we saw a deck edit. He actually decided to swap in uh, a lot of trainer cards because he had some good draws there. So we mm -hmm. see him putting some Gust of Winds yeah. in his deck. Uh, I think I saw another bill or two. So just doing yeah, things too. Yeah, it obviously takes time to. Uh, go into your deck and edit it and like because you you have to have exactly 60 cards in your deck So you can't just like go and add cards willy-nilly you have to choose the like you have to go to the cards You want to add and then you have to choose which cards you want to remove uh, And you might not want to go into your deck edit to add like one card you drew from a booster like if you draw say a professor oak from a booster after a fight you might be tempted to go at it, but um, it might not be worth it because there are a couple fights coming up where you have Colosseum pa packs that you're getting from fights, and you might draw other Pokemon that you can also add during that deck edit. Someone asked if they're playing with frame skip. No, this is the actual pace of the game. Yeah. It's that fast. <laughs> 
Actually, funny thing is, you might notice that there is, like, a brief white flash, um, that transitions between a lot of the actions during duels. Uh, if they were playing, so they're playing on BGB, which is an accurate emulator, it's a good emulator. If they were playing on the common uh, VBA emulator, that actually cuts out those white flashes, um, entirely, and makes it, like, even faster. But uh, this is still, like, blazingly fast. On the console has the white flashes, so VBA is just inaccurate and a piece of crap. <clears throat> so, um, Ness went to Fire Club after going back to beat Nikki, because Fire Club has a lot of colorless Pokemon. Colorless is weak to fighting, and you're still using this uh, fire and fighting fighting centric deck. Because fire has high damage output, and fighting gets damage out really quickly. Yep. We see uh, Ness actually used the Professor out to get rid of his hand, and then drew a handful of energy. <laughs> so, ends up having to take a sacrifice there, but now he's got Diglett, so good for him. And sometimes you have that sacrificial lamb out there just to set up that other Pokemon you've got in the back. Yeah. Oh, the trainer Ness is fighting is actually a really uh, dangerous trainer. So the, um, the fighting club is unique in that you have to go talk to the club leader first and you can't fight him initially. After you talk to him, his three um, apprentices, I guess, go to the other clubs in order to quote-unquote train. And, oh, he got a really good booster there. He got Professor Oak and Hitmonchan, both really useful cards. Like, Professor Oak is probably top three cards you want to be drawing, regardless of the situation. And, uh, yeah, he goes to add that uh, right there. Yeah, for those who don't know, Professor Oak is just discard whatever hand you have and draw seven new ones. Yeah, so, so it's so really powerful. Oak can be the only card in your hand, and then you just use it and get seven new cards. So <laughs> it's kind of busted. Uh, but yeah, the Fighting Club, uh, all its trainers are actually really dangerous because they use cards like Hitmonchan and Magmar and Electabuzz that are good standalone Pokemon that can deal damage quickly and also hit hard. Like, in particular, Electabuzz is probably uh, the all-around like, just worst Pokemon in general to face. Obviously, there are Pokemon that can deal more damage, like this Arcanine right now. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> That's a stacked Arcanine. Yeah. But uh, Electabuzz can just come out instantly, he can paralyze you uh, indefinitely, and then he can start dealing 40 damage a turn with Thunder Punches. 